All right, Charles, um, let's first, I guess, set the context here and maybe talk a little bit about how we find ourselves where we where we are today. And do you want to maybe uh, at a high level talk about how, um, because I, I think it's fair to say that currently watches are fairly financialized in the way that they are discussed and in the way that they are thought about by enthusiasts and by collectors and certainly with the media attention from over the last six to eight months in um, you know the broader world outside as well. So can you... Um, maybe uh, kick us off on helping us understand how we got here. Right. Yeah, sure. So, I mean, I would say that when it comes to logic versus emotion in watches, I mean, you know, emotion, at least in the world of modern watches, has always been, you know, critically important, right? I've said this before. I think that the modern uh, watch industry, the luxury watch industry is basically uh, revolves around you know playing to people's emotions for the you know appreciation of and enjoyment of watches. Um, I would also say that price has always been a constant factor as well, right? No matter, I mean, with the exception of maybe like certain pieces that just have some sort of provenance or you know piece uniques or you know pieces that are not replaceable. You know, they have some they're they're basically priceless, right? With the exception of watches like these, you know. Every watch, I think, must be considered, its merits must be considered at a certain price point, right? It's only a good watch for the money, right? I might buy this G-Shock for $100, but for $100,000, you know, no way, right? Right. I think just an interesting interjection here is that this is not always how it used to be historically. Uh, I've certainly heard Jack Forster and others talk about how in the early days of the internet, if we were to go back, you know, maybe 20 to 30 years um, in online forums, talking about prices was not just considered a taboo subject, but was just not allowed. Um, and I think that was because they wanted to emphasize uh, kind of the appreciation for craftsmanship, perhaps, and, um, you know, an, an emphasis on the intrinsic value of watches. But uh, it's not like price wasn't a factor back then as well. Right. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's always been a factor um, in terms of how you decide what about. to collect. It's just, yeah, exactly. It's just, you know, how much were people, you know, sharing their philosophies, sharing their ideas when it came to that, you know, in terms of like value for money, you know, discussions like these. Um, yeah, obviously those discussions are a lot harder to have when you're not allowed to talk about price, right? And, um, you know, even still today, we still see some of um, this culture, right? Certain brands, especially high-end brands, they'll have like price on request, right, for their retail prices for certain pieces, which, I mean, I've never honestly understood. Like, you know, there's a retail price, there's a price that you can get. Like, is that price going to be different depending on the person who's requesting it? Like, why is the price on request? I just don't understand. Um, is it to maybe create some sort of air of additional exclusivity such that you cannot even know the price without that's requesting? Exactly, like, that's exactly what it is. If you have to ask, you can't afford it. Yeah, but it's, I don't know. It still seems a bit ridiculous to not disclose the price at all. Mm -hmm. um, I, I guess they just... I I don't know. Maybe it's just a marketing tactic if they want that sort of you know clientele that is not concerned about price at all. Um, I don't know. Maybe that's an easier clientele to sell to sell watches to, or you know, not not necessarily like at all. Of course, they would still care about price, but it's like maybe less of a thought on their mind. Um, but then on the secondary market, right? Like when you when it comes to you know the value proposition of buying a piece pre owned or you know a vintage piece that is no longer made then yeah you know certainly price is a factor uh, 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 there as well but like you said um i think that even still today there's still some um like disagreement on i guess mainstream forums of you know how the topic should be approached and you know the degree to which you can approach this topic right but i think that generally speaking like talking about value for money in terms of like a retail price or a rough secondary market value is pretty standard these days, at least talking, definitely talking about value for money, like for retail. Right. Right. Um, so then, you know, there's not just the price, the, either the retail price or the secondary market price. That is the only factor when you're looking at, you know, 
um, the question of price in terms of logic versus emotion in watch collecting. Um, you also have to look at the, you know, what happens after you buy the watch, right? What happens from a financial aspect. So um, I think that um, over time, you know, people started looking at value retention um, with, you know, a greater emphasis, meaning that if they buy that watch, regardless of, uh, you know, retention just, just means, I mean, usually we talk about it as relative to retail, but on an individual basis, it just means, you know, the, the residual value relative to the price you bought the watch at, regardless of whether you paid, you know, retail or the market price, right? So people wanted whatever money they put in, they wanted to, you know, yeah. be able to keep you spend a hundred bucks you spend a hundred bucks is it now worth 90 or is it now worth 80 or is it now worth 110 or 100 right and so there's sort of this you know higher bar right not only so for this you know people this group of people and i think this you know audience size is increasing that care about value retention um you know myself included it's not just is the watch a compelling compelling value for money um for what i'm paying but also will it hold its value well right um, and then I would say that more recently, like within the last couple of years, um, there has been, you know, this this shift in focus. And I think the shift is pretty significant um, in terms of like how people think are thinking about watches in that they know they are not just saying, you know, we want I want this watch to retain value. But they're saying that, you know, some people are saying that I want to buy a watch with the expectation that it will be worth more. In the future, I want to buy this watch and wear it, or you know, maybe put it in a safe, whatever. But later down the line, I want this watch to be worth more right. than what I'm paying for it now. And that seems to be a direct consequence of the uh, injection and escalation of hype into into the watch market. Right? Um, the more people think that they're buying something that is incredible, the more they're the likelier they are to think that, that I'm buying something that's going to appreciate in value without necessarily thinking about the the fundamental economics of it. Well, yeah, I mean, I think it starts from like, you know, certain watches trading above retail, right? That gets a lot of people um, interested when they hear that they can't even, you know, buy this Rolex or this paddock at retail and the secondary market watch uh, value is, you know, double or more or whatever. And then that immediately gets, you know, certain opportunistic people thinking like, oh, you know, I, I don't even, I wouldn't buy this watch. Otherwise, you know, I don't even know that much about watches, but I heard this watch, you know, if I can just buy one at retail, I can get, you know, ten thousand dollars more for it so i'm going to try right right um and yeah you know it's just i think this the 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 price appreciation on the secondary market is just sort of a natural extension of that it's more people you know um trying to get on wait lists trying to you know buy these watches at retail and then it just results in um you know whoever else is in the market um who wants to buy these watches having a, lo a lower supply of watches to work with 